I officially canceled my Adobe Creative Cloud subscription two months ago. If you're also sick of paying the Adobe tax every month, let me show you what I've been using instead. First, the big one, Photoshop. There's two main ways that people use Photoshop. Some people use it to edit photos, but others use it for digital painting. So let's look at them separately. First, photography. A great alternative is Affinity Photo. Available on Windows, Mac, and iPad, you only have to pay once for the major versions and it's yours. The program is part of the Affinity Suite, which I'll be talking about more in this video. Affinity Photo has many of the same features as Photoshop, and I personally find the interface much more streamlined. Blend modes, adjustments, filters, effects, it's all there. The main thing Affinity Photo lacks is some of the newer AI and neural network based tools in Photoshop. Affinity can open PSD files, but not all the features will necessarily be supported. Affinity Photo has a free trial, so why not give it a shot? I have tons of tutorials for this program on my channel, so be sure to check them out. If you want a totally free alternative to Photoshop, check out GIMP. This program has been around for decades and is a staple of the open source image processing community. It does have a reputation as being difficult to use for beginners, but if you're willing to put in the time to learn it, it's a very powerful tool. Now, how about those who use Photoshop for digital painting? Well, one of the best free tools is Krita. Krita was the first program I fired up when I got my desktop tablet several years ago. It has an excellent selection of brushes and a clean interface. You can use it on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And for those on the iPad, I recommend Procreate. This is the gold standard of iPad apps. It's great for raster artwork, and it has fantastic integration with the Apple Pencil. It's a one-time purchase of $12.99, but it's worth every penny. Now let's look at Premiere Pro. This is probably the easiest program in the entire Adobe suite to replace, and that's because of DaVinci Resolve. This free video editor has more powerful tools than most paid software. There is a paid version, but I've never come close to needing it. Not only does the video editing interface feel sleek and modern, but DaVinci Resolve also has fully professional tools for working with color and audio. The entire program is available on Windows, Mac, Linux, and iPad. Now I understand this program might be overkill for some people. If you need something simpler, like just editing quick social media clips, check out CapCut. You can run it on your desktop Windows or Mac machine, but it really shines on mobile devices. It's supported on Android and iOS. The video editing is pretty basic, but it's great for adding captions and text over simple edits. So give it a look for your social media needs. Illustrator is Adobe's vector editing program. Once again, there's a great alternative in the Affinity suite, Affinity Designer. I've used it for logos, YouTube thumbnails, and print on demand products. I have a free two hour crash course on Affinity Designer here on my YouTube channel. Be sure to check it out if you wanna learn how to use this program. It has a wide variety of tools for working with vectors and fonts. And it even has a raster based workspace that you can quickly switch to for basic painting operations. Designer does basically everything I need, but you should know about one feature it lacks, automatic vector tracing. It's been requested for a while, but it still isn't there. If that's a big part of your workflow, you'll need to find an alternative tool to do that. If you want a totally free alternative to Illustrator, you can check out Inkscape. Available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, this tool also has a rich feature set that you can use for cartoons, logos, typography, and more. Now let's look at InDesign. This is commonly used for sophisticated page layouts like brochures and eBooks. Affinity Publisher is Affinity's answer to InDesign. Publisher has nice page layout options and smart text reflow in. Like all the Affinity programs, it's available on Windows, Mac, and iPad. So we've seen three programs in the Affinity suite. You can buy them individually, but the best deal is to buy the universal license. That includes all three programs across all three platforms, Windows, Mac, and iPad. Be sure to keep an eye out for sales throughout the year especially after Adobe does something annoying like raise their subscription prices. Another alternative to InDesign you may want to look into is Canva. It's a web-based application with a freemium model, but the free version is actually pretty good. Canva has way less features compared to desktop apps like InDesign and Publisher. If you're looking for things like blend modes and sophisticated masking, you won't find them in Canva. But one of Canva's strengths is this huge library of templates. Marketing materials, social media templates, even school worksheets. There's a ton of stuff there. Canva is often the first place I look when I need to quickly create a presentation template or some type of website banner. Now we come to After Effects, Adobe's motion graphics tool. This is probably the hardest Adobe program to replace. Now, I've never been an After Effects power user by any means, but here's some software that my After Effects focused friends have recommended. First, we return to DaVinci Resolve and its Fusion engine. Fusion is the motion graphics and special effects tool that is developed by Blackmagic Design. The team behind DaVinci Resolve, it's been used for hundreds of well-known Hollywood movies. Just like DaVinci, there's a free and paid version, and the free version provides more than enough for the average user. If you've installed DaVinci Resolve, you already have Fusion built in. When working on a video editing project, you can switch over to Fusion with the click of a button. It can be a little intimidating to start with, especially if you're not comfortable with a node-based workflow, but there's a wealth of information online to learn from. 
Now, another option for motion graphics is Blender. Blender is another poster child for free and open source software that competes head to head with paid competitors. Its primary use case is 3D modeling, but many people use it for animation and motion graphics as well. Just expect a steep learning curve. Next, we look at Lightroom. And like After Effects, I've never been a huge Lightroom user, but I know it's something that a lot of people want to replace. Now, Affinity Photo does have the ability to edit raw photos, but it isn't really designed for mass storage and organization of your photos. The free alternative I see mentioned the most is Darktable. It's free and available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So you can easily give it a try and see if it meets your needs. Have you replaced any of your Adobe software? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, I make tutorials for many of the programs I mentioned in this video. Affinity, DaVinci Resolve, and Canva. Click the subscribe button if you want to be notified when more tutorials come out. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.